Well, it's just so great having you joining us on our Eternity Church service again. And we're going to be receiving our tithes and offerings right now. Now, this is one thing I need to make so abundantly clear, especially for people that are not familiar with church, not familiar with Eternity Church. This is their switch off point where they say, oh, there goes the church asking for our money. It's actually a biblical principle that says that the people that, that belong to that particular church need to fund what goes on in that church. And it even says in the Bible that the, the person who leads the church and looks after the affairs of the church must be paid for it. And so how do we do that? Well, it actually comes out of the tithes and offerings that are brought in. Tithes is when we give a percentage of our income, and our offerings is when we, that's just when we splurge. And you say, you know what, God, we just want to give in um, X amount of money. And it's not about the amount, it's about the attitude behind the amount. All right, it's an attitude of gratitude. There's one for you. And so we're going to receive our tithes and offerings right now. Let's be generous as we give to the house of God right now. And all the, the details for the payments will be coming up on your screens. Well, we're getting into the Word of God again, and I'm going to be getting on to my series that I started last week called Sound the Trumpet, and I know and I believe by faith that it has impacted people's lives so far. So come on, our declaration is on the screen. I declare today that I'm ready to hear from God. I'm tuning my heart into His Word. I believe that Jesus is Lord, that His promises are true, and that His Word lasts forever. I believe that what I hear today could change my life because my best days are yet to come in Jesus' name. Now, why we say that declaration is simply because um, it's some years back when we were refashioning the way we were doing church here at Eternity Church, I, I realized that I wanted people to have an opportunity to say something before the Word of God was preached because sometimes we slip into spectator mode. And certainly with a message like what I've got for you today, I don't want people just to sit back there and say, well, I hope somebody else is watching this because I, I don't know if this is for me. The fact that you're watching this means that God's got an appointment with you right now. And so that is just a way of tuning ourselves in, saying the Word of God can impact me for now, and God is always planning a forward move for us. And so I want to continue my three-part series entitled Sound the Trumpet. 
as I feel that God has challenged me in such a way that I need to pass this on and hopefully you will accept the challenge that these words contain. We spoke last week about the eagle that is over the house and today I want to challenge us to dethrone the king. So part two, dethrone the king. Let's go back to our root scripture for this series. That's Hosea chapter 8, reading from verse 1 to the first part of verse 7. It says, Put the trumpet to your lips. An eagle is over the house of the Lord, because the people have broken my covenant and rebelled against my law. Israel cries out to me, Our God, we acknowledge you. But Israel has rejected what is good. An enemy will pursue him. They set up kings without my consent. They choose princes without my approval. With their silver and gold, they make idols for themselves to their own destruction. Samaria, throw out your calf idol. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of purity? They are from Israel. This calf, a metal worker, has made it. It's not from God. It will be broken in pieces, that calf of Samaria. They sow the wind and they reap the whirlwind. God says here through Hosea that the people have set up kings that he did not approve, he did not consent to, and they've, they've gone and found princes without God's approval. Kings speak to us of choosing our way and idolizing other people instead of God. We're putting something on the throne. Kings sit on thrones. What is on the throne of your life? What have you set up there that you've had to push God aside for to make space for? And princes speak of dominion. And we have given dominion to far too many things in our lives. Our addictions, our, um, our thought patterns. We're giving dominion to negativity. We're giving dominion to thoughts of doubt during the COVID crisis. We're giving dominion to fear and insecurity. And we've given these princes far too much dominion and God has not approved of them. This was a direct reference that, Hosea, that God was making via Hosea to when Samuel ruled the land of Israel as a judge. Samuel was, one of the, was the last of the judges. They were God's mouthpieces and the people objected to this system. We don't want a judge ruling over us. All the surrounding nations, they've got kings. We want to be just like them. It's like the church saying, we want to be just like the world. We, don't, we want to look like them. We want to sound like them. We, we, we want our principles and our standards to be just like that of the world. Let me tell you this. We know that the world is ready for a revival when, the, when society has got a greater influence on the church than the church has on society. That is a sign that the eagle is over the house and God is need, needing to move and to work. And so the people said, we don't want Samuel and his judgments. We want, we want an actual king. And so Saul was appointed. That was God's permissive will for the people, not his perfect will. And throughout the Old Testament, we see Israel setting up their own kings with no regard for God's will. I think one of the best stories that illustrates this um, so well is actually found in 1 Kings chapter 1, reading from verse 5 down to verse 7 where King David is on his deathbed and his son Adonijah decides to crown himself king. <laughs> Never a good idea. And so we pick up the reading in verse 5. It says, Now Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, put himself forward and said, I will be king. Really? And so he got chariots and horses ready with 50 men to run ahead of him. And his father had never rebuked him by saying, why do you behave as you do? He was also very handsome, and he was next born after Absalom. Adonijah conferred with Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar the priest, and they gave him their support. He went and he rallied some support from some of the officials around, around the court and around um, the, um, the government. David, on his deathbed, he hears of this, and he says, no, 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 this is not right. In fact, Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, comes to David and said, Why is Adonijah being set up as king? I thought Solomon, our son, was going to be the king. David says, that I, I, This wasn't my idea. He's doing this by himself. So Solomon is given a coronation ceremony. David says, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that Saul is, so that, sorry, that Solomon is the rightful king. And so he crowns Solomon as king, and he is given a coronation ceremony where he is crowned the king. And this happens at exactly the same time as Adonijah is having his own self-made coronation ceremony. 
to which he has invited a lot of dignitaries. And I want you to imagine this. They're having their party and they're kicking back there and they're having a wonderful time. And yay, Adonai is our new king. And suddenly they hear a commotion coming from a little way down the road from the real ceremony. So we pick up the story in 1 Kings 1, reading from verse 41 down. It says, Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it as they were finishing their feast. On hearing the sound of the trumpet, Joab asked, what's the meaning of all that noise in the city? Even as he was speaking, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar the priest, arrived. And Adonijah said, come in, a worthy man like you must be bringing good news. Not at all, Jonathan answered. Our Lord King David has made Solomon king. Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> when somebody comes to your coronation ceremony and says, by the way, this is fake news. The real one's happening down there. Verse 49 says, at this, all Adonijah's guests rose in alarm and dispersed. Within seconds, <laughs> he was the only person left. They all ran for cover because they did not want to be seen to be at the celebration of the wrong king. They did not want to be seen giving glory to the one that had not been appointed. They didn't want to be seen at the wrong ceremony, crowning the wrong king, and they scarpered. Wrong feast, wrong king. And they realized they had to get that king off the throne because he was the wrong one. We need to get off the throne the things in our lives that were never meant to be there in the first place. We put them there in a false coronation ceremony and God is looking at your life and saying, I need to be ruler of your life because only I know the way. The eagle is over the house of God and he's looking at our celebrity culture. I have a problem if we are elevating ourselves to fame and celebrity status when we should be humble servants of a humble king. I don't do these broadcasts and my daily broadcasts and my YouTube channel uh, to get some sort of fame. I, I do this to get a message out there that might just bless somebody, that might cause somebody to stop and consider their life. And everything I say comes from my brokenness, comes from my wounds and my scars. And I'm saying, don't make the same mistakes as me. I'm not saying I, I want celebrity culture. We make kings of ourselves and princes of others when the only throne that should be occupied in our lives is God's throne. We are called to honor those who God has raised up. Yes, we need to honor those in leadership positions. And when I say honor me, I'm not saying honor the person that I am. I'm saying honor the call that God has put on my life. Because if you cannot submit to the, to the vision of another person, then God will never ever get somebody to submit to yours. It's about submitting to what God is doing. But not, do not idolize people. Honoring is different to idolizing. Completely different. And it doesn't mean also that pastors like myself are beyond reproach. If we make mistakes, I've got people around me that I'm accountable to that will speak directly into my life. And I actually had that just this weekend when somebody I love and trust very dearly actually challenged me on something. They weren't pointing out an error. They were challenging me saying, maybe God wants to do this in your life. And it actually prompted me to seek God to a whole new level. And out of that came this message that I'm preaching to you over these three weeks. Last week, today, and next week. You know, we are called to honor those that God has raised up, as I've said. Don't idolize them. Don't make gods out of people like myself. Don't turn them and ourselves into more than what God ever intended. I'm here just to be the blower of the trumpet because God has put a word in my mouth and I'm amplifying it through the trumpet. And sometimes social media is that trumpet and sometimes a simple microphone is that trumpet. I don't like ministries named after people. You'll never see Paddy Venom Ministries because it's not about me. Those of us who have been called to preach are those who have set a trumpet to our mouths to amplify the revelation that God has put into our mouths. These words are not my own. I told you last Sunday how I arrived at this message. Check out last Sunday's message and you'll see how this sermon came to me. These words are said through my mouth, but they are limited by my vocabulary and they're limited by my understanding. But I am setting a trumpet, an amplifier, so that others can hear what I believe God is saying. I get no credit for this. 
I'm just the one who set the trumpet to his mouth. There are tens of thousands of other pastors doing exactly the same thing right now. God is the one who gave me a sound to make. Do not idolize me. Do not idolize those in ministry. Do not idolize people that are setting themselves up as, as great authorities in the kingdom of God. Look for those that are serving. Look, look for those who are humble. Jesus himself said, I did not come to, um, to be served, but, but to serve and to serve like a slave. Don't idolize me. That's way too much pressure on me. And I will prove disappointing for you. I can guarantee do not set up politicians, musicians, movie actors, or any other living being in, onto the throne that only God should be occupying. Too many people have been caught out at the wrong coronation ceremony, idolizing the self-important and the self-promoted who will crash under the weight of human adulation. And uh, scarcely a few months goes by without hearing about another key pastor that has fallen. And my heart goes out to them. There was pressure that was put on them that their human shoulders could not carry. And they gave in to something. The eagle is over the house and looking for what does not belong there. Verse 5 of Hosea 8 said, Throw out your calf idols. In the Old Testament, we see again and again how golden calf idols were made. Calf idols were often used by false religions, possibly because of their connection to farming and agriculture, where most people got their income from. And the use of them in Israel's worship was actually a rebellion and a breaking of covenant with the God of ages, who alone is to be worshipped. The El Shaddai, the Ancient of Days, is the only one that is worthy of worship. He's the only one also who can handle our worship. If you worship a person, they become bloated, they become big-headed, and they are destined to fall. They become top-heavy top heavy from a bloated head. Calf idols were a compromise, allowing the world in and appeasing the people to make the church popular. You see, churches these days must be contemporary and in touch with the modern world, but must remain holy and devoted to Christ alone. You see, in those days, there would be surrounding tribes that would, that would very often worship the calves. And so when the people of God were compromising with those around them, trying to make their beliefs a little bit more palatable to other people, they allowed them to put their gods into the place where God was worshipped. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. The Lord, our God, is one. We serve one God, eternally coexistent as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is the God that we serve. Churches, yes, must be contemporary. We have a contemporary feel, a contemporary um, look to our building here. But let me tell you something. Come to this church and you will find Jesus. You'll find some reality here. The standards of the world cannot become our standards. We need to hold ourselves to a higher accountability. When Aaron made a golden calf while Moses was up Mount Sinai talking to the real God, you know what he was doing? He was making a compromise. He took the gold that the people had taken from Egypt. Read what happened just before the children of Israel left Egypt, left their slavery in Egypt. What happened? It says they actually went to the houses of the Egyptians and they were given treasures. They were given gold and silver and clothing and things like that. That was God prompting that. God prompted by God. The provision, they had all this provision and they went and they took and they they, they took all the gold and all the provision that they had got from God and they built a golden calf which reminded them of a certain Egyptian God. The people worshipped the idol and they forgot about the God who had delivered them and they were going back to that which they had been delivered from. Pigs go back and roll in the mud. They took the gifts from God and they made an idol out of them. Do we do that with the gifted and the talented? Do we do that with our gifts? God has given you a gift of prophecy. Do you then make a, an idol out of that and say, well, I'm prophet so-and-so. Prophet is not a title. You can't call yourself prophet so-and-so. Prophet is a function. When you function in the office of the prophet, you are prophesying. That's it. You're a prophet. You don't call yourself that. Let's not take the gifts that God has given us and, to, and make an idol out of them. I don't call myself teacher Patty. I don't do that. Though teaching is the natural gift that God has given to me. I've got the ability to break open things and bring understanding into people's minds. And I'm so humbled that God should choose such a flawed vessel to be able to do that. But you see, don't make an idol out of that gift. 
and say, oh, I'm teacher Paddy now and I need people to, to bow at, the, at that name. No, that's not reality. Don't take the gifts that God has given you and make an idol out of it. The gift of gold was given to the Israelites and they made a golden calf out of it. They had become impatient, waiting for Moses and God to stop chatting up the mountain. But God was not sticking to their timelines and their schedules. And they tried to force the issue. People do not run ahead of God and force things to happen. God has got all the time in the world and he will work in his time. It's very frustrating. I know. I, I feel you on that one. But I want you to know that God is working a plan. And I take great comfort from knowing that everything is unfolding according to God's schedule. When they were challenged about the idol, instead of repenting, they start to make excuses. They said ridiculous things like, oh no, this calf just jumped out of the fire. Really? There's no excuse to idolize that which God did not set up. God is sifting His church in this day and in this time, and God will not be opposed. Pastors fail all the time. Some will never return. And often it is because there has been an expectation that has been put on them that their shoulders were never designed to carry. We are set aside from secular work to focus on the things of God and to bring the trumpet to our mouths to make loud what we sense God is saying. God says in Hosea 8 verse 5 that His anger burns against the idols and those that set them up. When we sow, we reap. And what we sow, we reap. God is sovereign and must be allowed to be the God of our lives. Dethrone anything and anyone who you have idolized and revered way above their human station. Dethrone the kings. Dethrone the money that is on the throne of your life. Constant pursuit of money. If you're constantly pursuing money, you'll never have enough. Take off that throne. Your job, your career, take that off the throne. Put God there and the job and the career will flourish. Take off the throne, the ac acquisition of material things, and put Jesus there, and he will add to your life everything that you need. Dethrone the kings we have set up, and reserve the throne of your heart for Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, we're humbled by a message like this, and we're caused to take stock of our own lives. And God, as a church, as a people, as Christ followers, we repent before you right now and we say, God, for every time that we've set up something in our lives that was not meant to be there, that we've idolized, that we've worshipped, instead of giving due praise to you, Lord Jesus, we repent of that. We turn away from that. And we thank you that your forgiveness is upon us, that in your wrath you remember mercy. Help us, Lord Jesus, to best reflect the kingdom of God in everything we say and do. And help us to make wise choices about that which we put in, what we put on the throne of our lives. And may it always be you. May it always be in you, through you, and all about you. And we give you the praise for this in Jesus' name. You keep talking to God for a moment. I just want to speak to people. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus before. Won't you take this opportunity? Won't you put him on the throne of your life? And it takes just saying that. Jesus, I want to put you on the throne of my life right now. Forgive me for having anything else on the throne. Forgive me for being at the wrong coronation ceremony. Help me, Lord Jesus, to dethrone my personal kings and to make Jesus Christ the king of my life this day. I place my life in your hands and I call you my savior, my God, my Lord, my friend, and my king. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. If you'd like to make contact with the church via the website or on social media, you're welcome to do that. If you have questions to ask about serving Jesus, we would love to help you. May God bless you. Part three next week. You do not want to miss this. What the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take.